Hello and welcome to the BBC Good Food podcast with Tom Kerridge. I'm Orlando and we're here today to talk about exciting ingredients, cooking techniques and general kitchen chat. Plus, we have an original Tom Kerridge recipe for you to try out at home, whether you're a beginner or a budding chef. Welcome back to the BBC Good Food podcast. I have with me Tom and Rosie, and I am delighted to announce it's Christmas. Yay! (laughs) Could you tell because I'm dressed as Santa? (laughs) Now, Tom, do you watch The Queen on Christmas Day? No. I mean, not no, because I'm like, no, just because I'm normally up to my eyeballs still cooking or in the washing up or like... It doesn't but you're at home. Stop. You're at home. You're well, at home. I'm either at my own, I'm at someone's home, but I'm a chef, so I end up doing the cooking. And it's, it's not for any other reason apart from I love it. it and it's also, it's always surrounded by family. It's always sur- family and friend. This year, I think there was, uh, last year, there was 14 of us, 14, maybe 16 at my house. So that, that was a, it's a, it's a big undertaking. I and then even, they always even if I'm at, to yeah, you. <laughs> well, even if I'm at the in-laws, I'm doing the cooking and there's yeah. still, it's a big family. Like there's a lot of people and I love it. And I think, you know, it, it is absolutely brilliant. So no, I don't get to watch Queen, but no, I don't also get to watch the, the afternoon movie and no, I don't get to watch, like, there's nothing like I, I am up to my eyeballs in food but i'm loving every minute and does your boy help you little man is pretty good at um uh, no actually no (laughs) he's very good normally all the time at making um doing food christmas is the one period of the year so his birthday is actually on the 21st of december so he has like two weeks solid of pretty much everyone giving him a present. So he's just like, he's just like, just like opens all his... He's like, toyed out, isn't he? He's just toyed and stuff and things and bright lights and noises. And th- he's just like, this is just the, the best. He's so, up to his eyeballs and presents and you're yeah, up to like, your eyeballs and cooking. He's out like food, I am bothered. Toys, racing cars, bikes, stuff. Things, things that go and bang, noise, just like, like it, but it's amazing. That's what Christmas is about, isn't it? Yeah. Surely it's about kids having a brilliant time and adults being surrounded by food. And it's just, it's just great. I love it. And um, Rosie, where will you be? I will probably be at home um, with my mum and hopefully with my in-laws and... I mean, I'd love it if my sister and my little nephew came, and yeah, just. And I'll, you'll be cooking as well. I'll be obviously, cooking. Won't I'll, you? I'll be cooking in tandem with my mum. It will be my mum will be back. What I call backseat cooking. So she'll be <laughs> sitting there holding court at the table with a gin and tonic and a glass of wine, probably, um, and she'll be just checking that I'm doing it all according to her instructions. And what's on the menu? Turkey. Turkey. Every time, I I just I really I only cook it at Christmas, and I really love a really good turkey. Yeah. And Tom, you be Turkey? Turkey, 100%. Yeah, like, great. I mean, you go from, like, everyone expects chefs or, or people in the foodie world to be doing, oh, we'll do goose, or we'll do an amazing full rib of beef, or we'll do... No, it's turkey. Turkey all the way. Turkey is luck. I can agree more. It's a great got to be turkey. turkey that's been reared for six months and well looked after and yeah. beautiful. Like, it's amazing. Just cook it properly and you get the most incredible, delicious flavour. And t- the reason why it's always turkey is because turkey is the best cold meat as well. So <sighs> Boxing Day, it, it's, 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 you get double turkey. It's it's just fantastic. It's, it's the perfect thing because it serves as many people as you want it to. Um, it sits there peacefully in the oven while you're getting everything else ready or opening your presents or doing the other things and you get all those marvellous leftovers so people knock it but I think that's a great shame it's got such great flavour and you get what I love is it the combination got real you've got the breast yeah. meat which is so lovely and buttery and yeah. juicy and succulent and then you've got the dark meat which has that slightly more gamey flavour and is is kind of more interesting and you can have a bit of both on your plate and then all the stuffings and the trimmings it's heaven. I love Christmas. Um, do you serve a first course or anything, Rosie, or go straight in? Do yeah, get, get, we do. Get, um, but we do something very something simple. So we we um, ch- we alternate years. Sometimes we do a really, really good smoked salmon, just very simply with some very um, lovely ripe avocado and a little bit of baby gem or something. Very, very simple. Keep it simple because, as we know, we've got so much to do on Christmas Day. Um, and then my... My actual favourite thing that we do is an English muffin um, cut in half and toasted and then um, potted shrimp. So we make a spice butter with mace, cayenne pepper, a little bit of lemon juice and then um, brown shrimp just warmed through in the melted butter and then um, 
uh, spooned onto these toasted English muffins, and that is delicious. The gourmet household, isn't it? So I might go around Rosie's. I got me on it. Please. <laughs> do you do a first course as well? No, we used to, right? But then it always got like it's ridiculous. It gets too much because, like. It, because there's always loads of us. So, so Beth comes from this big old family, and, and like, so there's always a load of us. And you think by the so everything we do, we don't. I don't do a plated so at Christmas lunch. I do family style. So you put the sprouts, you put everything goes into the middle of the table, and everyone helps themselves. So, but the problem with helping yourself is you just keep going, don't you? When it's there, and you go, and by the time you've gone, like by the time you've had a starter, and then you've had loads of that that Christmas day feeling, it's like you ain't going to get to dessert. So everybody. We'd rather have pudding on Christmas Day than a starter that you, it's always pretty much going to be like smoked salmon or something. Yeah. You'll go, do you know what? We'll swear of that. We might have a late breakfast on Christmas Day morning, maybe like eggs on toast or something, super good bacon sandwiches, yeah. then a really good, the turkey lunch, then Christmas pudding and whatever else that we got to do for the Christmas pudding haters, what, whoever those people are, what's wrong with them? Like the, <laughs> some, they, they definitely exist. They, <laughs> they, they exist. There's a lot of them. They're normally around my house, so I've got to be honest. Uh, and then and then you kind of like just settle into the rest of the evening and there may be some cheese later on and that's it but well, I'd rather skip that and make sure that you can have Christmas pudding what time do you end up eating normally? well it, it, it really oh, what varies time, what time the, do you aim last for? year it was seven in the evening I went for an oh. e- we went for an evening one mm. which was so it meant that people could travel from over the country and come to us they could have bits of because like Rosie it, like we had this discussion just briefly a bit, and you, you want to avoid family feuds arguments and all all sorts of bits and bobs and you go well for example my brother who is married to and lives in gloucester they you know they'll have time with their, his his in-laws and cousins and whatever and then come to us for the evening or that, like so <gasps> do you think he people... is the turkey dinner with them before coming on to your turkey dinner my brother definitely does that <laughs> Double dropping not, just, not, no veggies though he just uh, he, just any excuse to get four helpings of roast potatoes that's what he'd do <laughs> <laughs> I'm with yeah him. so i went for i went for evening last year this year who knows what we'll do who knows what we'll do and what time do you eat Rosie? i like to do it between two and four I just That's like a, three yeah. then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's oh, so, good with numbers. As you know, my math skills are fantastic. Um, somewhere between <laughs> like the late afternoon and late lunch. <laughs> a late lunch is always good because then it gives, we have to have a bacon sandwich. That's how we start. That's how we start Christmas day uh, in the Burkett household. And yeah, now it's a, now it's a family tradition. So bacon sandwich and a glass of champagne. That's the first thing we have. And then it's cooking all morning, drinking more. Um, I would say the starters does take the heat off slightly, like with people getting hungry. Um, so the starters and then the and then the Christmas lunch at around three, three thirty, three forty five. Um, yeah, there can be outbreaks of hostility, I have found, when there's plenty to drink and people getting hungry. That's why you a need a bacon fractured. sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. And do you have helpers in the kitchen? You said your mother is a back is in the back seat there giving advice. My mum's driving it. Like let's not let's be clear. She <laughs> she's definitely driving it. Um and yeah, my husband is like so helpful. Because if I have ha- had that experience of being your own on your own in the kitchen when you're doing doing this whole thing and everyone else is having a, a marvelous time and you feel a bit lonely left out there, I, like slaving. I and actually that can quite happen. like I actually quite like being on my own and doing it. I do I don't know if you get this, but when people are just coming in constantly and going, What can I do? What can I do? How can I help? How can I help? And it's like you've you've got it and you're on top of it and you're doing it. And it's quite hard sometimes to field all the questions yeah. when when you're trying to make I, do you find that tom it drives me nuts so i've got <laughs> i have to do it on my own because like from a so chef send them me, out of the kitchen yeah yeah of course you do it like but it's my it's my it's been my job for nearly 30 years and it's all about structure and organization the whole week before i've got it i'm boxed off i know what i'm doing i'm doing, i know the systems i clean as i wash up as i go along don't get in this don't ruin the system don't stand there like don't you have to why don't you just go, go and help yourself to another gin and tonic watch a really rubbish movie, sit down, have a chat, eat some nuts, do whatever. <laughs> like, it's no bother. I've, like, I got this cooking thing sorted. It's all right. It's my job. I know what I'm doing with it. And it's like, I like it on my own in there. Although I'm quite lucky we've got quite a big kitchen. So it does become a, an area where people hang out. So it is nice. It's a nice, it's a nice Christmas space to be in, but just, just 
don't touch the food until it's ready. I, I think the ideal is having people milling around, having people pouring you drinks, having people to talk to and having people to delegate to. So if I need something doing, I'm going to ask you. And stop, stop AC chasing after the dog on the motorbike. <laughs> That's a good thing to do. Don't let me do the turkey, all right? That's the way that we want to do it. Sounds like you very ha- much have this uh, Christmas under control. <laughs> now, Rosie, what's your very favourite bit of the Christmas Christmas meal to eat? The one, the one <laughs> mouthful that you can have. There's so much to choose no, from. No, I insist you but have. But the mouthful one. of the whole Christmas meal, um, the actual Christmas lunch, because turkey, we're going to get onto turkey sandwiches, and that's a whole other thing. Yeah, we'll have to do it. Oh gosh, we need another podcast for for the turkey leftovers, won't we? But the the meal itself is just that first. Uh, forkful of tur- a little bit of turkey, a little bit of stuffing, a little bit of potato, a little bit of carrot, uh, a, gravy, l- a gravy, a little bit of um, gravy. Yeah, obviously the gravy. Just that first forkful of a little bit of everything, little bacon roll on there. Uh, yeah, delicious. Uh, by the way, are you a gravy over everything, girl? Do you put yes, gra- not over the meat because some people yes, just no, over the-, the meat as well. Uh, but some people have it just on the meat. Just on the, believe that gravy belongs to me. Who are those people? Are they the same people that don't like Christmas pudding or sprouts? What's wrong with them? No, I no. put it over everything. And my trick is for roast potatoes, just a little trick, um, cut them open so that you expose that lovely pearlescent interior and then pearlescent. give them a little cut and then pour the gravy on because then the gravy gets into the potato. Mm, I'm going to try that. And Tom, what's your very favourite mouthful of that meal? It- it has to be pigs in blankets. Like, I mean, I, I mean, who doesn't love a sausage wrapped in bacon? I mean, I, I, a vegetarian. Inv- <laughs> uh, well, yeah, but I reckon even they could be turned with a sausage wrapped in bacon. I mean, that for me is Christmas Day all over. That is something because you. When else would? When else do you ever eat pigs in blankets? It, that is Christmas Day. That. Well, do you know they have hot cross buns on sale all year round now. Or you can probably get pigs in blankets on on sale all year round now. I mean, it, it, it wrecks these things if they don't keep them special. That's it. Well, that's that's the thing. It makes it feel super special on Christmas Day. A, a, a pigs, a pigs in blankets, lovely with a bit. Of bread sauce on oh, them. Oh, bread sauce. Delicious. Yeah. Now, we asked on social media what people's worst bit of the Christmas meal was, and we thought they were all going to say sprouts, but it wasn't sprouts at all. And it was indeed, as you said, Tom, Christmas pudding. Yeah. There are a lot of Christmas pudding haters out there. Is that because they've never met the right Christmas pudding? No, I, I, I can't. I absolutely love it. I think Christmas pudding is fantastic, but it is a very big, strong, powerful flavour. And it isn't like any other pudding that you eat any other the rest of the year. Puddings are normally fruity, meringue, sweety, chocolatey, caramelly kind of so crunchy all of a, or yeah. Yeah, so yeah. all of a sudden and that's the sort of puddings that we all associate with. And maybe every now and then you might have some lemon tart or something, but not very often. Do you go, you might have a bit of a steam treacle pudding at some point, but Christmas pudding is that next step. It is something that is, it's rich, it's wholesome, it's stodgy, it's but, but gungy, it's, but it's big flavours, it's big and it's powerful. So as a pudding wise, it's not something that people would recognise that they normally have throughout the rest of the year. So I could get why people go, oh, I'm, I'm not sure of this. However, it's one of those things that I absolutely love and look forward to. So I, I get why some people are... Because it isn't, it's not chocolate with salted caramel sauce, is it? <laughs> it's similar, I think, to fruitcake. A lot of people don't really like those kind of deep, dark, fruity desserts, do they? Some, no. For some, that's just they a They feel real a no. bit old-fashioned, but that shouldn't matter if, you know, if there's one well, time it is of the old, year. it is old-fashioned. I mean, it's it's such a, it's part of the old Christmas heritage, isn't it? Yeah, it's a sort of Victorian in, invention. Um, but that, uh, you know, if if you're going to be old-fashioned on one day of the year, it should really be Christmas, shouldn't it? 100%, yeah. Um, I love mince meat as well, mince pies. Well, that's it. I mean, mince pies, people like that. Some people love mince pies, some people hate it. Mince pies are amazing. But if you think of a Christmas pudding as just like the inside of a mince pie, like, it's lush. I mm. mean, uh, imagine that, a whole Christmas pudding wrapped in pastry. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah. And what, what do you like with your Christmas pudding? Do you like the brandy butter or the clotted cream? I have to be honest, it's um, clotted cream. I'm, I'm a big fan of clotted cream. I do. What, all, what about custard? Custard. custard. I'm yeah, a big custard. fan of custard. thick, thick. Cu- I like I like counterbalance as well of temperature. So you get 
hot steamed crisp pudding, but really cold, thick vanilla custard. It's lush. Oh, ice cream. You could have ice cream then and, and make it even more oh, yeah. extreme. You could, you? yeah, 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 absolutely. Go delicious. You with clotted it. cream ice cream. How about that? That would be... I just love the way clotted cream melts on the hot on the hot um Christmas pudding. It just melts into it. It's amazing. Christmas it's Christmas fantastic is the best. stuff, clotted cream. Oh, isn't it's, it? it's really Every so time good. I eat clotted cream, I think, why don't I eat more of this? <laughs> well, you see, I live in Devon, so I do eat more of it, as you yeah, may have you noticed. Do, yeah. so, <laughs> you wear it well, Orlando. <laughs> I just love it. And there are lots of different makes of clotted cream that we can get down in Devon. I tell you, they're all absolutely wonderful. Some are more golden than others. Some are white. Some are uh, kind of almost tan coloured, but they're all absolutely glorious. But you can buy clotted cream, I think, all over the country now, can't you? Yeah. I think we should do a clotted cream tasting for the next podcast. Yeah, well, yeah actually a series of podcasts about clotted cream would be a good one, wouldn't it? Um, your childhood memories of, of Christmas, Rosie, was it um, Was it you and your... you got a brother, I think. A uh, sister. Sister, yeah. sister. Yeah, and a brother-in-law. Um, yeah, so... Oh, that's how you have a brother-in-law. Sorry, yeah. I worked it out now. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah uh, Christmas was really exciting. Again, all about the food, um, as it is for, for many people. And do, you, do you open your presents on Christmas morning? Yeah, so... Because some people open them... Uh, with the on bacon a, sandwich. On other days which I think must be perfect torture. It has to be on Christmas morning that you open your presents, isn't it? Always Christmas yeah. morning. Got yeah, to be. I've, Christ- no, I've heard people Christi- do Christi- Yeah, Christmas morning. Christmas morning. Yeah, we'd always have a bacon sandwich, unwrap the presents, and then... Um, then we get stuck into the to the food, really. Um, but my parents really did go all out for suspending our belief in... Um, Father Christmas. You don't still believe in him, do you? Not anymore, but I did till I was about 17, I think. <laughs> Because they, my mum just went so far. She would one year she actually smashed a brandy glass on the um, on the fireplace and put big sooty footprints across the carpet. So I was I was just like, well, I went into school. I was like, he definitely exists because my mum wouldn't my mum wouldn't stamp soot all over the carpet, would she? She's not. <laughs> She's very theatrical. Yeah. Your mother, isn't she? Um, and you, your little boy, he do- certainly believes in Santa, doesn't he? He does. Yeah. How long that- can we keep that up for? Well, that he, well, this, he'll, he's four this Christmas. So well, I'm open a long time, as, as, as still as long as the years. Santa suit. <laughs> yeah, Santa suit fits me. Last year I stood, I got dressed up as Santa stood at the bottom of the garden and waved at him from his bedroom window as he went to bed. Oh, what a lucky little boy! And he, he was like. Santa, and then I quickly got changed and went upstairs and read him in nighttime. So and he's like, oh, "I saw Santa in the garden." I was like, "No way!" Oh, wow. <laughs> That's what it's about. What did he look like? He was, he was massive. He was big and fat. I was like, "It's bald." Dude, he's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's bald. Bald. He was wearing jeans and trainers. <laughs> 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 no, I dressed up properly as Santa and it was brilliant. Yeah, so hopefully, yeah, I, I'm planning on doing that all year round. Yeah, all year, like, it's all great. Year all year round. Yeah. I said, do you know what? It was It was a, one of the first pairs of trousers I put on an age and just went, ooh, great fit. Yeah, <laughs> really. <laughs> Still to come on BBC Good Foods podcast with Tom Kerridge. Think of the flavours in Christmas pudding. Mm. Same mm. as brown sauce. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's like solid brown sauce. So it goes so well with bacon. Solid it's brown ab- sauce isn't going to sell it to people that don't like Christmas pudding. <laughs> <laughs> now, we need to talk about the turkey because people really worry about the turkey and how to cook it. So, uh, Tom, have you got any ideas for people? I mean, yeah. first of all, choose the right turkey. Yeah. <laughs> Fresh or frozen or no fresh one fresh? Been, one that they they start they start breeding around well summertime ready for ready for Christmas but then the the most amazing thing about to is the, the you get the breast meat right there's so the yield from it there's so much meat on the turkey crowns and breast and I would cook the two things separately so I always cook the legs and the breast separately because you want the legs to be for that full of flavour. But uh, the problem is that the crown, the crowns itself, the breast meat, there's so much meat on it. So by the time you got to the centre of it cooked, like you, you don't want, but and then the legs to be cooked, 
that it's going to be it's going to be over and that's where people start getting on the turkeys dry so cook them separately braise the turkey legs the two days before do it like make them like a cocker van you know cook it and st like stew it it's beautiful then you can flake the meat from it all those sort of things and then roast the crown separately on its own so you don't get to take it out that but that classic turkey shot with the legs and everything all together because no but you can still get the beautiful crown and yeah. you still carve that at the table yeah. that can still be the whole process but the legs you've got the meat and it's it's beautiful and that way you're going to get the legs perfectly cooked and the breast and do you brine it now there's a lot of talk about brining yes nowadays. definitely brine it both definitely the, both both the legs and the, and the breast i wouldn't bother with the legs if i'm going to braise in the day before that's no problem or two days before but the the breast definitely brine it it, it, it flavor it seasons it up it's amazing but it also helps to keep Keeps in moisture moist, doesn't yeah, it exactly, yeah exactly, exactly yeah i think uh, some people find the whole brine thing a bit of a worry because they haven't got anywhere big enough to hold the, the turkey and they don't want to put it in their dustbin or something like that because you do need a big thing well, to you brine think it. Of you all don't the have rubbish, to. Though. No, but think of all the rubbish that we buy at Christmas, the crappy toys and the rubbishy things and the amount of money they spend to get to buy to spend ten pounds from a garden centre on a, on a big brand plastic. new clean plastic box to put a turkey in. Yeah. I mean, come on, you're already buying loads of lights that you're not going to use. You know, <laughs> you may as well buy a box to keep a turkey in for a tenner. You yeah. can also do um, if you don't want to do the immersing it in a in a liquid brine, you can just really salt it really well the day before, and that has a similar effect. Is that salt and sugar, or just salt I just use salt. I just yeah. use really good um, sea salt flakes and just really judiciously season it all over, yeah. and then. And just leave it uncovered in the fridge. And do you do that thing of covering it with muslin ever? I have because done that before. That, that, that's a bit of a. I don't a bother trip. anymore. Yeah, it seems to waste an awful lot of butter. Yeah, I, I just instead just rub it with lots of butter and keep basting it throughout the cooking. But the muslin, the muslin technique is a Leith's um, cooking technique, I think, and it is amazing for getting that like really, really um, good coverage of the golden uh, coating. But I just think if you rub it really nicely with butter and then keep basting it and, and just make sure you're looking after it in the cooking, it's it should come out really lovely. Um, and you need to be quite flexible with your timings, don't you? So that Because you can't book the time when you're going to have it on the table because you don't actually know till the turkey's That's cooked. That's why it's between two and four. <laughs> <laughs> um, but do you use the thermometer? Yeah. I actually the turkeys that I've been getting lately um have a have a one of these ones oh, in the pop in up, the pop -up oh, yeah. and they're quite good. Yeah. Um I would check it with a thermometer, but usually you, you sort of know, you know, that it's done. I mean the the legs being braised, they don't need checking with a thermometer, but the, the breast you use a, a digital thermometer, do you? I do, Tom? yeah, yeah, yeah I, de I definitely do. Uh, I, I mean it's again digital thermometer what 15 20 quid again all the rubbishy things that you buy over christmas that you think are like comedy toys and stuff it's yeah. just like for 15 or 20 quid this is going to guarantee that you get an amazing turkey cooked beautifully perfect not overcooked wonderfully flavored uh, you know uh, for the sake of that uh, definitely invest in a digital thermometer that you can then use the rest, for the rest of the year yeah i think this is the one time of year when you're silly not to have one really because it's such a, a help and i remember my mother fiddling around trying to get juices out from under the legs and say, calling everyone in and saying, is it are the juices running clear, darling? And I mean, well, they didn't look that clear to me. And it was all a bit of a guessing game, whereas the thermometer tells you once and for all, doesn't exactly it? Exactly that. Right? And then, of course, you get this gorgeous gravy with the with the turkey. That's one of the nice things about it. So would you have made your some turkey stock the day before, Tom? Yes, I would. I would, I would have. Using the giblets. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and giblets and chicken stocks. So you kind of get this double poultry flavour. Definitely, definitely, definitely make it before. I'm so not a fan of the giblety flavour. Is it a bit livery for you? Mm, bit li I like the neck. I use the neck. The neck, yeah. But not the giblets because I find them, yeah, like you say, a little bit livery. Um, and I don't like that flavour so much. Yeah, it can be a tiny bit strong, but the, actually last year I did it and it wasn't strong at all. It just gave a little bit of Oof. a tiny hint of gaminess to it, but nothing nothing alarming. People sometimes do make their whole gravy in advance, but you kind of... My mum does. Does she? <laughs> no, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, I, it, you can you can definitely help yourself along, though, with making making chicken stock ahead and then, you know, infusing it with the, with the neck the, the day before. 
you can do it in stages have stuff frozen help yourself out in that way yeah it's always really helpful i remember when i worked at the magazine we used to every year we get used to get uh, letters in from readers saying can i cook the whole to Christmas meal the day before and then reheat it on the day. And so every year we had to say, no, you can't forget this mad scheme of yours. But in a sense, it would be possible to cook. I don't think it'd be very nice, but you could cook everything the day before, slice it up and then slice it onto plates. But then you're taking all the stress out of Christmas and who wants that? You know, (laughs) part of the fun is the jeopardy of it all. I don't think it would be a, a much of a gourmet Christmas, would it? And um, Tom, you're not into the idea of a goose, then? No, I love goose. Don't get me wrong; I think but, goose is great. But you know, again, it's a bit like turkey, where you've got you have to cook the breast separately to because goose is beautiful pink, um, but the breast, but the legs have to be cooked for a long time, a bit like duck. So it's it's one of those, and also the yield from goose is a lot less than turkey. It's got a it's a huge hollow cavity in the middle. The breasts are not mm. nothing like that of a yeah, turkey. Not much there. And is also, there? you know, what what you're doing then is you're fo- forcing. Um, uh, food snobbery and middle class habits onto people that just go. Do you know what? I just fancy turkey. I'm a, I, I'm all over the turkey. I love it. Don't I do think goose is special and I do think goose is fantastic. But as an all rounder, that if you're cooking for fifteen people, do you know what I mean? Turkey wins eight yeah. people. Like it, it, it's and the just leftovers a, that you get from turkey as well. It goes yeah. on. For, it, it goes on Boxing forever. Boxing Day, yeah. Boxing Day, cold turkey is just amazing. Like it's you just can, lovely. of course, have too much turkey, but I think you could equally so well say you never have enough goose. So that's unsatisfactory in itself, isn't it? Yeah, there'd be nothing worse than running out of meat on Christmas Day, would there? You'd have to give people very little portions with a great deal of gravy, wouldn't you? We'd enjoy the gravy. Now, stuffing. Stuffing in the bird or out of the bird? I never do it in the bird. I, I put like lemon, onion, bay, um, thyme, in garlic in the bird, but I, I don't stuff the... I do the stuffing separately. We had an anxious question from social media about this, but I don't think people stuff the bird anymore, do they? Do no, you... I do it separately as yeah. well. Yeah, the it... Stuffing is better. There's something a bit c- clammy about it, it when it's in the bird, as well as the problem. You don't of get the crispness. Getting... Yeah, it sort of it steams in there, doesn't it, rather yeah. than actually baking. Yeah, it's nice, though. It's lovely. But I think if you do it separately, it, it's a lot easier then to do it portion it out rather than trying to scoop it from inside the neck cavity of the bird and trying to make it like it's a lot easier to serve done separately yeah um and what about the other elements of the christmas feast we have obviously we have roast potatoes and we have tom's killer recipe on good food website for roast potatoes which i heartily recommend where you roll them in a kind of a a bit of potato mash which gives them the most potato-ish um, coating that you can ever imagine. Uh-huh. Um, we've got the sprouts, of course, haven't we? Through gritted teeth. Love a sprout. I love, sprouts. love a sprout. That's fine. Love I do too. I've um, got the great... sprout tops as well. I really sprout tops sprout are delicious. Top. What's a, the sprout top? So the sprout tops are the leaves on the top of the sprouts. Oh right, uh, yes. The sprout stalk, yeah. and they've got an amazing flavour. Really kind of really irony, like good green flavour, and they're lovely. Just um, blanched and tossed with a bit of butter and salt and pepper. But I also do sprouts. They're like the most. They're like spring greens on steroids. They're mm, lush. They're I so love good. Them. Sprout tops are fantastic. Um, and we've got carrots. Have we got mm. carrots? Yeah. Definitely got carrots. Um, have we got bread sauce? Yes. yes. Okay, how do we do our bread sauce? Bread sauce can be polarising. You can spend all morning on it or you can just, you know, I have to say, mash a slice of bread into milk. The sachets are quite good. Really? Yeah, there are some really good sachets. Um I can't. I won't name brands, but but some of the ready-made sachets, if you are pushed, are good. But I and like. You just add milk to them. You just add milk, but then you could add a, a, an onion studded with cloves as well, and sort of you could judge it up a little bit with I mean, cream. They're probably more or less what you would use. They're probably breadcrumbs in that sachet, yeah. and a few things roughly what you would use. Yeah, totally. And but I actually really enjoy the the process of making bread sauce and I'd use a really nice um really flavorful sourdough um and then I would cover it with milk put the onion in with the studded with the cloves that's fun isn't it the onion studded with cloves yeah I do slightly differently I do a milk and butter infusion with chopped onion cloves and bits and bobs and then bring that up to the boil and then cling film it and leave it to infuse like a cup of tea and then throw in parsley stalks and leave that for 10 minutes pass it off and then I make the breadcrumbs separately so I slice the bread and dry it and then so you've got the 
uh, hot milk passed off and then you got dry breadcrumbs and then pa- like, passed off what does that mean that means just got rid of the yeah put through so you got rid of the clothes in the end and so you got this like so then that way so you, you it's a fine powder of bread rather than it being clumpy so then you bring the milk and the butter up back to the boil and then add the fine powder and keep whisking it out and it thickens it and it goes to a really it's more like a puree and it's beautiful because you've powdered and passed and everything's amazing and the bread that I like Rosie was talking about using sourdough I like using rye bread for this because it's oh, got gosh. an amazing amazing kind of dark flavor to it it's beautiful so is your bread sauce quite dark then yeah yeah it's kind of like a sandy dark color and it but it's lush the flavor is amazing from it it's super 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 delicious but yeah it's it's, it's, a, it's the same sort of thing though that clovey oniony flavor is really nice and cream yeah yeah a splash of cream to finish it's and a bit of butter not with butter just to finish loads it. of yeah, butter yeah um cranberry sauce do we do cranberry sauce yep it <laughs> definitely my like, mother-in-law makes a mean cranberry sauce i have to say with whole cranberries and orange juice that is really 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 good it's amazing stuff cranberries because they're, they're such an alien fruit they um they grow in bogs in america don't they they, that, do, they yeah. actually come and they bounce them around to check that they do right. and they, they grow in the summertime and not in the way i've always found it a little weird that they're not it's not seasonal so the cranberries you get are, are normally frozen from back so i find it mm. all a bit bizarre but hey it tastes lush with turkey yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the state they they have can it, it comes in a can um, cranberry sauce and the trick is to get it out of the can still holding the kind of shape of the can they like it to look like it's oh, right, just come out thing. from the can that's a th- that's the thing out there anyway um, now any tips to avoid Christmas panic because um, you know it can we, we it. know. <laughs> Cook it we all the day before and then microwave it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if you were, you give me an idea that, dear, now, if you did plate it all up in individual plates, you could one by one microwave them to heat, hand them out, and everyone could be eating in relay, couldn't they? There would be advantages to that because you wouldn't have them all at the same table bickering if if they were the bickering type. I think what Tom said about serving things family style helps, and rather than you know waiting for everything to get cold while you're dishing up all the all the bits and bobs. Yeah, it's a bit of a struggle at the table because the sprouts are always up there, and say it's my adorable sister-in-law up there. I don't want to have to say pass the sprouts and Why so not? on. Well. Well, all of we, I don't know. We're a bit clumsy, maybe, in our family. We knock things over the whole time. And if the gravy goes over, it's the end of the world, isn't it? So wine glasses go over. I don't know. We're not very tall, so we're quite compact. So I think that's why we knock things over. And so if you're a knocking over sort of person, you don't. the family service is, is what tricky. I, what I did this year, in fact, instead of it being family service, I stuck it all. It was actually all in the kitchen and did it buffet style. So it was a stack of oh. plates. You grabbed it, helped yourself and went and sat down. So it's a case, line, yeah. it kind of in a line because there were so many of us. But it, for me, it would work, that would work if there's eight of you. Like, you know, all sit, like if you've it, got the space to do that, that's lovely. It's really difficult to try and plate up. If there's a few of you and you're trying to plate up and put a bit on everyone's plate, by the time you've done it, it has gone cold. So it is, and so much about it is structure and organisation. When when your um, readers and, and social media guys were coming in about can I do it the day before? Actually, yeah, there is a lot you can do the day before. You can blanch the vegetables the day mm. before. You can even par cook the roast potatoes the day before. To the, your to the method pot. with exactly is, is done the day before, before and that's roasted, roasted, roasted on the day. Yeah. So there is so much you can do the day before, and it is a case of right regening or re-blanching the the, the cabbages or or the cauliflower cheese you can make, but not the final bit all of that sort of stuff you can get done and then finishing it on the day that's the thing so it's all about structure and organization definitely or just go around to roses <laughs> i mean yeah if, if you're worried about um if you are worried about the stress of it definitely prep ahead and do the do, you know do the bread sauce ahead as well and do and make your stocks ready for the gravy to help with that as well. Yeah, it's this kind of day when I wish I had a walk-in fridge. That's kind of dream where you could just yeah. walk in mm. and it's all shelves, floor to ceiling shelves and you could, you've could you got space for everything. But the fridge does get a bit critical on this time with all those little But the great thing things. is because it's so cold at this time of year, we can keep stuff outside. So I've even kept the turkey outside when it's really cold, you know, make loads of space that way because it is huge, isn't it? 
Yeah. So, be a, use your imagination. Do you know, we've got something to eat, which I'm really looking forward to. This is a really nice recipe from the Good Food website. It's a Tom recipe for something rather special, which is a Christmas pudding cheesecake. Ooh. And not only does it sound delicious, and actually it's a very clever recipe, but it's actually no cook, I noticed. So, you don't actually have to cook anything. It's, it's much more than an assembly job. Smash but, it all together. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I didn't want to say that, Tom, but that but that's that looks it. incredible. Um, so it's a beautiful Should I do the honors? It's a beautiful <gasps> sort of golden cheesecake with um satsumas. Would those be satsumas on top? Or, yeah. yeah. Oh, that looks so and good. And a ginger nut crust. And we're getting lavish slices cut for us by no well, other than and so that's got Tom the, Carriage. That's got the pudding running through the, the cream cheese. Yeah, and it's a nice way of using Thank up. You. Christmas pudding, you know, for like, yeah, I mean, and for those people that are, do not like Christmas pudding, it's a nice way of getting them to eat it, right, without it feeling like they're having Would Christmas Would you tell pudding. them that it's flavoured with something else other than Christmas pudding? No, I tell them it's got Christmas pudding in it. That's the way that it is. You know, it's that's that's fairly standard, you know, but go on, give it a go. You know, it's, it's a nice way of getting those sort of flavours into people. So if you're a Christmas pudding hater, you might like it. And if you love Christmas pudding anyway... You're getting it. So, yeah. you know, either so way. You could serve it on Christmas Day instead of the pudding, which uh, part, if you don't like it, can be feel a bit heavy. That is so um, But good. also great as a Boxing Day treat when you've got that. It's rather annoying to have a bit of Christmas pudding left because it's a very precious thing, a Christmas pudding. It's, got, it's full of expensive, gorgeous and green. It took someone a long time to make. And then you get a bit left over, the don't other, you? The other good thing about Christmas pudding, right, and this is if you've never had it, on Boxing Day, it's really good just warmed up and served with a full English breakfast. Mm. It's amazing. So think of the flavours in Christmas pudding. Mm. Same mm. as brown sauce. Oh, yeah. It's like it's like solid brown sauce. So it goes so well with bacon. Solid it's brown sauce isn't going to sell it to people that don't <laughs> like Christmas pudding. <laughs> No, but it is. To, uh, try just imagine Could you it pass with bacon. It off as, uh, cut it in a little circle and pass it off as black pudding to the um, the Christmas pudding haters. I imagine if people don't, the same people that don't <laughs> like Christmas pudding probably <laughs> don't like black pudding either because it is the same sort of flavour. Except that's now got pig's blood in it. So like we've gone <laughs> beyond. It's like I, I mean, let's go one step at a time. <laughs> Christmas about- pudding cheesecake. The next thing, black pudding cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> black pudding Christmas pudding. I'm enjoying this so much. This is so delicious. Uh, it's quite boozy. It's excellent. Um, we're, we must finish because we've run out of time. But just finally, we haven't even mentioned mis- mince pies. And I know that people adore mince pies. Are you among them, Rosie? I am. I love them. Um, and I, But I do do something. I do mess with them a little bit. Um, I like to make them with a frangipan top. Mm. So I do the short crust on the bottom and then really delicious mince meat. I usually buy it in and then pimp it up a little bit with a bit of sherry, some um, flaked almonds, That's a little bit of maraschino cherries. If you buy mince meat, it's, it's generally the same stuff that you would make it with yeah. yourself if, yeah. if it's a responsible manufacturer. They, they, it's Get just that really they're good doing quality it one. for them, rather, they're doing it rather than you. Yeah, and you can, you can pimp it up a little bit and then um, a frangipan topping um, with uh, ground almonds, butter, eggs sugar all blitzed together lovely and then sprinkle on um the the sliced uh, the sliced flaked almonds on top and they puff up and they look beautiful and actually you can get this you can get this um edible gold glitter and i just do a little dusting of that on top as well and it, they are really, when they come out of the oven yeah and yeah. they're really beautiful because the frangipan sort of meets the pastry and it, it honestly delicious and i put a little bit of almond um you know disserano or almond liqueur into the frangipan as well do you do uh, mi- into the mince meat, sorry. Do you do mince pies at the restaurant? Tom? We do do little mince pies at the restaurant. However, the best mince pies, uh, Beth makes them every year. It's a little Christmas thing that oh. she does. And she makes amazing mince pies make, using puff pastry um, uh, and rolls them out and fills them. And little man gets involved and uh, like makes a massive mess. And then it's the, a lovely thing that we take around to friends and families and drop, drop mince pies off. So, yeah, mince pies are a big hit in our family. It's a huge thing. I can hear the bells jingling as I listen to that anecdote Tom I'd like to thank you both enormously and everyone listening we all wish you an enormously happy Christmas Happy Happy Christmas! Christmas! Happy Christmas! Thank you for listening to today's show 
You'll find the recipe and thousands more on bbcgoodfood.com. If you have a minute, we'd love to hear from you on Twitter, Facebook or Instagram at BBC Good Food.